Hi guys, welcome to today's video. I am getting ready to head over to the gym. So I'm going to be mixing my pre-workout. Like I mentioned in about a video or two ago, I am currently using Xtend BCAAs. And right now I have the blood orange flavor. I actually really like this flavor, so I picked up another bottle yesterday. For my pre-workout, I am using this pre-workout that I cannot pronounce, and it is by Delta Sports, and I buy this at a local uh, supplement store, so I really don't know if you can find this on bodybuilding.com or GNC or Vitamin Shop, but this pre-workout is freaking amazing. I've been using it for a week and a half now, and so far, so good. I really enjoy it. And I'm probably going to use it for the rest of the prep. I'm probably going to take like a five day break next week and then I will restart just because I noticed that three quarters of a scoop is no longer as effective. And I really don't wanna push it to one scoop because this pre-workout is really intense. So I'm going to be mixing three quarters of a scoop of this pre-workout with half a scoop of the BCAAs. And this is just to add flavor. I drink um, my BCAAs throughout the entire day. So I will have half a scoop now. And then I would say that probably for the rest of the day, I would probably end up having another two scoops just because it's delicious and it helps me drink my water. And I'm also going to be adding some L-carnitine. This is by Pro Sports, I think. Pro Sucks and it's in berry flavor. split this past week so I wanted to just kind of share what I'm going to be doing so Sundays are my heavy leg days and I try to do a track workout Mondays are my shoulder days now Tuesdays are my glute focused plyometric days tomorrow is Wednesday I'm going to be hitting back and then Thursday I'm going to be hitting uh, quads and glutes Friday I'm going to be hitting chest and arms and then Saturday is my rest day. My cardio right now is at 40 to 45 minutes. And I personally love cardio, so I don't mind it. I started running in 2016. So I could actually run and do cardio for an hour to an hour and a half without an issue. When I do cardio on a machine, I obviously can't go for that long. But that is why I love going to the track or I love going out walking or just running on a trail that is what I'm trying to do for my cardio right now but if I have to do it on a machine what I do is I will do like 10 minutes on the Stairmaster and then I will move on to like the bike and then I will do like incline walking so I will move around machines but most of the time I could go outside and do my cardio and I do about 40 to 45 minutes I stop myself at 40 to 45 minutes because I don't want to overdo it right now just because I am lifting a lot, so I don't want to kind of like burn out. I know when I was running, I was doing, I was running every day basically, and I was doing three to four miles pretty much every day, and then I would have a long run, and I was running up to 14 miles, so that was like over an hour, and I had no issues, but I wasn't lifting as much, so running was majority of my training and then I would just lift three to four times a week for like 20 to 30 minutes and now I'm lifting for like an hour to an hour and a half. I'm going to finish my pre-workout and then I'm going to head over to the gym. Like I said, I'm going to be creating, I still haven't created the workout so I basically just create the workout as I go. So I'm going to be creating a very high intensity cardio leg workout to trim the crap out of my legs because my legs hold the most fat. So I'm going to be doing that and then I think I'm also going to be adding some core work and then I think that's going to be it. I'm going to be doing, like I said, plyometrics, heavy glutes and then I'm going to probably do an, another 30 minutes of, 30 to 40 minutes of cardio depending on how many calories I burn. My goal is around a thousand. 
so that's what I'm doing so I will see you guys when I get to the gym I thought I would do a commentary over this workout I did complete a couple of other exercises before I did my plyometrics so if you guys are interested in my entire workout for today just look in the description below and you guys will see the entire breakdown this entire workout is completed as a circuit so the first exercise that I picked was one of the most difficult ones and that is jumping lunges I have a really hard time with my balance so jumping lunges are just really hard for me so I started with those. The key to jumping lunges is to make sure that you are using power and exploding up while pushing through your heel and you will feel it on your glutes and on your quads as well. But that will keep you from falling over. So if you go on your toes and you lose balance, you're gonna basically go sideways. So just focus on staring forward and just pick something to stare at. Stare at it, keep your core tight and just use as much energy as you can while doing the jumping lunges. The next exercise in this circuit is a deep step up with a knee tuck. So there's no jumping involved. I picked a bench that is a little bit high so I can do a deep step up. If you notice, my hips are low and I am way below parallel. So for this, you just basically want to push through that heel, bring your knee in and squeeze your glutes at the top of each rep. This is one of the easiest exercises to complete, but it does get your heart rate up and it pumps up your booty like nothing else. I love this exercise. I add the deep step ups with the knee tuck in between a lot of my uh, exercises when I'm doing upper body. So I did that and then the next exercise is a little combination. So it's done with a plate. I have a 25 pound plate at the bottom of my foot just so I can go deeper into the lunge. The first exercise is a deep lunge while touching the floor and then jumping up with a knee tuck. And I did about, I, you know what, I'm not even going to mention the reps. Just look below and you guys will see everything. But anyways, right after I did the deep lunge with the knee tuck jump, I moved on to weighted jumping lunges and my stance is a little bit outside of shoulder width and my toes are out. It's very important to land softly on your knees and push through your heel. Doing jumping lunges alone is hard, but adding weight just adds like a, another level of difficult. So if you are using weight, just make sure that you are landing softly on your knees and you're not pushing through your toes. So make sure you stay on that heel and squeeze your glutes at the top of each rep in order for you to activate your glutes and not just work on your quads. So right after the jumping lunges, I moved on to the Smith machine and I did pop squats. I was having a really hard time with the Smith machine just because it was shaking a lot. So if you have a medicine ball or a free weight bar, you could use that, but the reason why I decided to use the Smith machine is because of the way that um, it keeps my form. Like my form is perfect when I do it on the Smith machine and I don't lean forward. And this just makes me push through my glutes more than my quads. So I did those and then right after that, I grabbed the ball slam that we have and this one is 20 pounds and it does not bounce back. So it makes it more difficult to do ball slams or to do basically anything with it because you have to pick up the ball. It does not bounce back to you. And this is a little combination between a pop squat and a ball slam. Right after that, I did some lateral, I, I'm gonna call these step ups. So I did lateral step ups with a knee tuck and a little jump. Basically same thing, you push through your heel and then you squeeze your glutes at the top of each rep, focusing on using power and speed, keeping your core tight and just look at something so your balance, so you don't lose balance. Right after the lateral lunges, I mean lateral step ups, I did Bulgarian jump squats. I suck at these, these are freaking hard. I don't even know why I'm doing them with a little jump because doing them without the jump is hard enough. But anyways, I did those. And same thing, just focus on keeping your core tight and look at something so you don't lose balance 
And yeah, right after that, I did a little combination on the bench. I really don't know how to name this exercise, so I'm just going to name each exercise in this little combination. So I did a bench jump into a squat, then I jumped down and I moved on to a bench jumping squat with a knee tuck and then I did a little flip and then I repeated that. And I finished this workout with kettlebell swings and kettlebell squats with an upright row. It was a killer workout, guys. Give it a try on a lighter leg day and I guarantee you that you will feel the burn and you will get a pump in a different way. So it's not, you're not lifting heavy, but it still hits your legs. So it's important to add different kinds of workouts in your training so i right now i'm doing a heavy leg day and then i do a day like this and then i finish my week with another medium to heavy leg day but yes i hope you guys enjoyed this workout don't forget that the breakdown will be in the description below all right guys i hope you guys enjoyed that workout i am back in the same spot as i was in the morning this is like my new favorite place to film just because i can easily set my camera here and i don't have to worry about like scratching down and I can sit down and talk to you guys and be comfortable. So before I end this video, I did want to talk about how to track your progress. And I wanted to talk about a few things that I have been struggling with for the past couple of days. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know what I'm about to say, but I just wanted to sit down and talk to you guys on here. So like I said, if you guys follow me on Instagram, then you probably already know what I'm about to what I'm about to talk about. Does that make sense? I'm having difficulties with the diet brain, so I apologize. But anyways, I have not filmed a physique update, but I am taking my progress pictures every weekend. And this past weekend, I felt really good. Like I felt lean, I looked different, like my shoulders were popping out more. I, I was looking at my stomach and I could see more ab definition. I could feel my legs getting tighter and tighter. So I decided to step on the scale. I haven't weighed myself since Dave's birthday it was 117 pounds. I am 5'5". Five five. I told you guys that I didn't believe that I was 117 pounds just because I know my body and I know that at 117 pounds, I'm really tiny and I wasn't that tiny when I weighed myself. So I just completely forgot the scale. I put it away. I didn't step on it until this past weekend. I weighed myself on Saturday morning before I was going to take my progress pictures. And like I said, I felt really good before stepping on the scale and that is why I wanted to weigh myself. And I stepped on the scale and it said I was 129.4. That is like, what, a 12 pound difference? My math might be wrong, but that's a huge jump from 117 pounds. Now, I know better. I know that I should not be relying on the scale. I know that the scale doesn't tell you everything. I tell all my clients that they should track their progress by how they feel, how they look in the mirror, how their clothes fit, instead of focusing on the scale. I know all of this, but I still let it get to me. I let that damn number ruin my entire weekend. On Saturday, like I said, I was gonna take my progress pictures. I stepped on the scale, I saw the number, and I freaked out, so I just did not take pictures, and I just basically let it ruin my day. I talked to Dave about it, and I was questioning my training, my diet, I was asking myself, should I cut my calories? Should I add more cardio? And I was freaking out and just doubting myself and I was scared because I'm only technically now five and a half weeks out. So I did get a little bit scared and I was like, wow, do I have to lose nine pounds in order for me to you know, step on stage in six weeks? I kept asking myself that because I know when I compete, I'm anywhere between 120 to 123 pounds. Seeing that 129 pounds really freaked me out. I went to bed Saturday night completely depressed and just worried and I woke up on Sunday and I told myself I'm not going to let that number get to me I'm going to keep training hard I'm going to stick to my plan and just hope for the best so I got up 
I put my bikini on and I took my progress pictures and I will insert them on the screen for you guys. I looked at those pictures and I felt proud because I liked what I saw and I could see my hard work. So I'm just going to forget the scale. I'm not going to step on it ever again. I'm just going to put it away in a closet and totally forget about it and just keep tracking my progress with my pictures and the way my clothes fit and how I look in the mirror. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because I know that there's a lot of people out there who struggle with the scale. I know guys do too because my husband, Dave, he is trying to gain weight. So when he steps on the scale and he sees a lower number than he what he wants to see, he gets upset because he's working really hard to try to gain muscle. And I know girls are the opposite. When they step on the scale and they see a higher number or the number doesn't go down, they get discouraged and they feel bad about themselves. I'm pretty sure every girl goes through this whether you want to admit it or not. I let it get to me and I usually don't bother with things like that. So I know that we all go through it and it's hard. It's hard to be working super hard and you know be dieting and have a number just make you feel so discouraged. Like it's really, really sad. I do feel a lot better now and I did feel a lot better when I saw my progress pictures, but that number is still in the back of my head. So, yeah, it's been a rough couple of days, but I have not done any changes to my diet or my training. I did change my training split, but I'm not cutting my calories just yet, just because I am noticing a difference in my physique. Even though that number is super high, I am noticing changes like on my upper body and my legs and my core. So I don't want to cut my calories just because of a stupid number on the scale. I don't want to ruin my metabolism or my relationship with food because of a show. So I am going to make sure to focus on my health because I'm not just thinking about the show, I'm thinking about after the show. I don't want to rebound. I don't want to have to deal with all of that again. I dealt with it in 2012 and I don't want to go back there. So I am making sure that I am mentally strong and prepared for after the show. So that is what is going on with me. I just wanted to share it with all of you. And what else did I have to share with you guys? I think that's it. I did end up going to the grocery store earlier today. I did not take you guys with me. I probably put the clip before or after, I will put the clip after this, I don't know. But anyways, I just went to the grocery store and I picked up the basics. My macros are the same, my calories are going to be the same for this week, but I am going to start making, I'm going to start adding more whole foods into my diet instead of eating like a lot of protein bars and a lot of like pre-packaged things. Just making sure that I am feeding my body nutritious foods because it needs it. I am so sore, so tired. I am training very hard. So that's what I'm going to keep doing. I am not cutting anything out and I'm not saying that if you eat protein bars or anything like that, you're not going to see progress, but I'm just going to make sure to clean things up for the next couple of weeks so my digestion can be good for the next couple of weeks for the show. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.